My name is Tayshan Hayden Smith. I'm from Latimer Road, West London. Football to me isn't just a career, it's my passion and my way of life. There's been a lot of obstacles in the way, but I've always found ways to overcome them. This is my story. So from a very young age, um, I found myself in a situation where my dad wasn't around. Um, I had three younger siblings, and of course, like, I had my dreams and aspirations. At the age of three, my mum just put me in at Westway um, just to get me active and, and playing sports. She could see me kicking around something or playing around with something with my feet, and I think she just thought uh, football would be a really good thing for me to, to jump into. It was just that, that love and hunger of dribbling and, and tricks, and, and Tayshan had this thing where he, he seemed to like to make people go, oh my God, what did I just see there? So whilst playing for Westway, Fulham picked me up. They saw my ability, but then they put me down and said that my size was a problem. My size has always been a theme of failure and it did get me down at times, but um, I've always tried to look beyond that and um, believe in myself. After what happened at Fulham, I managed to work my way into Brentford's um, academy system. Eventually they signed me. So at Brentford we had, um, we had a futsal session and I was lucky enough to coach him. I really appreciated the level, like his level with the ball was, was a joke, even compared to, to, to the rest of the Brentford boys. I just remember looking at my mum and she was literally so excited for me. Um, and it was a really lovely moment to share with my mum. Not long after that, unfortunately, I found out that my mum was terminally ill and that had a massive impact on my life, I think more than anything else. It was such an exciting time and it was just overshadowed by the fact that my mum had just been told she's got three months to live. I feel like football was my kind of saviour at the time because I didn't really have anyone to turn to so much. And thankfully, my mum's still here today, but unfortunately she is deteriorating so um, I do want her to see me become a professional footballer one day and I, and I hope to still achieve that. At the age of 16 I bounced around a few clubs and I just remember having a really big opportunity at Newcastle. The coaches are completely buzzing off of me, verbally telling me like I'm gonna sign. I remember I was just so excited to come home and tell everyone like my success at Newcastle and how well it was going and eventually telling them and revealing to them that I was gonna sign a professional contract there. Bear in mind, my mum was still ill at that time um, and doctors were saying that she could pass at any time. But then I got a phone call um, and I basically found out that um, I was expecting a child. I remember that completely shaking everything upside down. So obviously with a child on the way, I just didn't know what was around the corner. I didn't know what to do in those few months um, after not getting signed by Newcastle. I think it was a very tough, few months uh, I just remember my football just taking a big hit I think psychologically and mentally my mind was just not right um, and I'd say that that was probably a very very difficult time in my life. I bounced through like Canvey Island, Grey's Athletic, I did well in a few games and I think Southend United like saw me at, at one game or something like that. Yeah so they brought me into training at, the, at that time they just partnered with an Austrian club just invited me straight away um, to Austria to to sign for them but the Austrian team was saying we, we need to know a decision in the next week so I chose the Austrian team and we ended up winning the league in Austria so they basically offered to extend my stay um, my contract there but then Grenfell had happened I got the first text from Opal my missus and she was like to me there's a fire in the tower like next door to us like, like I knew people in that tower and I was thinking I hope everything's alright. So I started I started messaging people that I knew from the tower. I remember I booked flights home straight away. And so I left on that night to come home. And obviously what I come home to was just crazy. These are people that we knew as friends and people we knew as community. And these are faces that we saw all the time. Grenfell was really significant in growing up because I used to play football underneath it. Myself and my partner started up a charity to give a platform and a service of therapy and education, mainly because of what happened and what people witnessed, you know, with the fire and the people that we lost. An opportunity came about to do some work with QPR. Uh, I think it was like mental health week and I needed to sit down and interview Les Ferdinand. From the start of the interview with Les Ferdinand, like in my mind, all I could think about was I need to ask him for a trial at QPR. Considering what I've been through and considering where he comes from, you know, Les Ferdinand is from the same block that I live in. And I was like, I'm desperate and hungry to achieve, but I'd love to have an opportunity at QPR. He was quite happy. He was like, he was like yeah, no, I'd love to um, have you in and, and see what you can do. Because 
Les Ferdinand also came from a background um, of non-league. So not only is he from my area, but he's also come through non-league. So he can relate in that sense. Taishan, uh, in my opinion, he could be the, the English Neymar if he gets the right opportunity. I'm still on trial at QPR and I'm hoping to see where this journey takes me. I hope to be a professional footballer very soon.